Hey everyone, it's Karina with Karina Loves to Plan. Welcome back to my channel. So for St. Patrick's Day, I thought I would do a green ink exploration and swatch all the green inks that are currently in my collection. Let's get started. So I'm going to be swatching in my A5 Galen Leather Notebook with 52 GSM Tamoy River paper. I'm going to be using my Speedball B2 nib on my Kakamori nib holder. I'm also going to be using, where are we here, my Kakamori brass nib on my River City Pen Co holder. So I'm going to just try and draw little designs here just so that it's easier, not as much cleanup. The first green ink is from Birmingham Pen Co and it is Antique Sepia or Sepia? Sepia? I've heard it pronounced both ways. I used to work in a photography studio and if anybody ever remembers the Sears portrait studios, we'd, I'd work, well, I did work there and um, we were selling portrait packages in like black and white or color, or we always pronounced it sepia. So I like this speedball pen. I should just do something there, here, there. Easy to clean off in between. And I love Birmingham Pen Co. inks because they are, so many of them are chromo shading inks. So this one is Birmingham Pen Co. Antique Sepia. And already you can see the different chromo shading happening here. Really cool. So it's, it starts off as green, but then turns into like all of those different pinks. I love it. So that is Birmingham Pen Co. Antique Sepia. The second ink I have here is Birmingham Pen Co. Basil Pesto. And this is one I've had for a while. I've used it in a pen during 30 inks, 30 days. I need to ink up a pen properly with this for more than just the one day. But what I find so interesting about this is that it doesn't, go down green and like it goes down this kind of weird color initially and it's really interesting the way that it goes down it doesn't it kind of looks like it's yellow and orange when it first goes down and then it dries to this really lovely lovely kind of muted green so ooh, I am going to get ink on my fingers before this is done so this is Birmingham Penco, and this is Basil Pesto. There's like a, when you first write with it, there's a tinge of like a yellowy orange to it, but then when it dries, that yellowy orange goes away and it settles down to that green. I like that a lot. So that's Birmingham Pen Co. Basil Pesto. The next one is another Birmingham Pen Co., but it's a custom one made for me by Katie, and she has called it Evergreen. I haven't had a chance to use this in a pen yet, but I am interested to know what it looks like. So, oh, did I even get any? There we go. I'm trying to do like different designs with this just to make it look a little bit more interesting. I'm trying to add more ink in certain places to get more shading as well. And when when you clean off that B nib, the water turns into this kind of neon highlighter green it's really interesting because then you can kind of get an idea of what was used to create this particular ink and it is a custom that's evergreen and i really like the deep deep green of this oops making sure that i can show you the different nib widths there we go. Perfect. So that is Birmingham Penco 
It's a custom from my friend Katie and it is evergreen. The next ink is from Wearing Ghoul and it is the Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And I've already used this in a pen and I've used this actually in a couple of fountain pen ink paintings. I wanna see one, why I'm still hanging on to this or if I just wanna make sure that I finish it. Okay, now that I've seen it in this swatch and reminded what it looks like, I remember why I wanna keep this because it is a lovely lighter green. May not be the best for writing and, and reading and things, but it is a very pretty color. And adding just a little bit there for shading. And then using my brass nib. So this is Wearing Ghoul. And I'm just going to write Tom Sawyer because it's a lot to write in here. Do my figure eights and the different nib widths. Whoops. And come on. And it is a very light ink, so not really the best for writing, but it's really pretty for artwork. So I don't know, I'm gonna debate whether or not I keep that or pass that on to a friend, but it is, it's pretty. I have to admit that it is pretty, but it's not the most legible of inks. So that is Wearing Ghoul, Tom Sawyer. Then we have a Wearing Ghoul, The Secret Garden. I really like this one. I just haven't had a chance to use it recently. Like that's the thing with having so many uh, inks and it's just not always feasible to use every ink that you currently own. But this one is also quite a light ink. I've used it in a couple of paintings, but it's not one that I think is the best in terms of writing. It's better for artwork. It's got a lovely shimmer to it though, which I like, but I think I am growing out of or moving on from the really light inks that I used to like this time last year. I went through really a, a light, lighter inks phase. And then once I actually got all of them, I realized that they are harder for my older eyes to work with. So they're not really an ink that I know I that I reach for. They're very pretty, but I just think that it's too light for me. So that is Wearing Ghoul, The Secret Garden. Next we have Diamine Cappadocia, and this one is, I believe it's an exclusive with Galen Leather. This was all, this was an ink that this year I purchased without ever trying a sample, but it's one that I do not regret buying at all because I used this in a pen in December and I love it. I love the shimmer. I love the tone and saturation of this particular ink. I just think it's fantastic. There we go. And you'll see it as it dries just how fantastic this ink is. So this is a diamine. Ooh, I have way too much ink on that nib there. Diamine Cappadocia and my figure eights. And you can see it already drying. It's fantastic. It's gorgeous. I love the shimmer. It's a very festive ink, but I could see myself using this at any other time of year. So that is Diamine Cappadocia. Next we have Diamine Meadow. This was actually one of the first bottles of ink I ever purchased. And I still have it because I still love it. I think it's a great, I think everyday ink, very spring summery type of green, but it's also a very well-behaving green. It does shade really, really well. It's one of those classics that I don't think I will ever tire of. Gosh, you should see the color of my <laughs> my rinsing water at the moment. Ooh. 
There you go. So we have Diamine, Meadow. With my figure eights. This one I think I try to use at least once or twice a year in a pen, but I do use it often for fountain pen ink paintings, especially for leaves. It's such a good ink for leaves. Oh look, went a little bit over there with the, the ink. I'm gonna add a little bit more to this because it does shade nicely, this ink. All right, so that is Dye Mine Meadow. Next, we have a more recent edition. This is Dye Mine Merry and Bright, and this was from the 2023 Ink Vent Calendar. And this one was sent to me very generously by Miss Marilyn Darling. Just, well, agitating here to get some of that shimmer out and threw out the sample. There we go. And that is very bright. It feels like marker green, like a Crayola felt marker green rather than a green that can be found out in nature. Already getting them all over my hands. That's okay. So this is Diamine, Merry and Bright. And the figure eights. The shimmer in here is really pretty. It feels very subtle compared to other shimmer inks like Cappadocia up there is just very in your face shimmer and this one is a little bit more subdued, but I like it. So this is Diamine, Merry and Bright. The next one we have is another Diamine ink vent. This one is from 2022 and it is Olive Swirl. I really love this one. I love the obviously the olive green tone of it but I love the shimmer in it as well like just look at that that's fantastic I really like that I'm gonna add a little bit more see if we can get some of the shimmer to pop a little bit then I use this in, which pen did I use this in? But like there's not a lot left of that little sample there because I loved it so much and I've also sent it to a friend. It's a fun ink, olive swirl. And you can see it drying. I really like that kind of olive green tone but the shimmer in it just elevates it. There we go. Perfect, so that is Dye Mine Olive Swirl. Last of my Dye Mine green inks is Dye Mine Sugar Snap, and this is from Believe Inkvent 2023. Uh, and correct me if, I wrong, if I am wrong, if it's from that particular collection. I know that Mary and Bright is from 2023. I don't remember about Sugar Snap. There we go. I really like, I like the mute, more muted tone of that green versus Merry and Bright is, it feels more artificial. Whereas this is a lot more muted and I like that. So this is Diamine, Sugar, Snap. And I like the more subtle shimmer in this. That's pretty. I do need to use this. I do love my greens. So that is Diamine Sugar Snap. Next we have Pilot Hiroshizuku Chiku Rim. This is again one of the first inks that I ever purchased, not realizing that it will take me my entire lifetime to get through a bottle that size, but I still do really like it. It's one of those really dependable greens. And I thought at one point it looked very similar to 
Diamine Meadow, but it's actually a bit lighter than Diamine Meadow. And it's nice having a, a pilot ink in a very dependable green. Ah, green color. Hold on, let's fix this. Let's put this with that. There we go. Gosh, what did I do there? I had too much ink on the nib, so Pilot Hiroshizuku Chiku Rin. I love Pilot inks, they're all so dependable. And if you think that your pen isn't working, try a Pilot ink and that should help you determine if it was the pen or the ink that was having an issue. So this is Pilot Iroshizuku Chiku Rin. Next we have Pilot Iroshizuku Shin Ryoku and this one looks very different from any of the, or well the other Pilot ink for sure, but this one looks very very different. Let's have a, oh make sure I'm in the right area here. This is this is verging on a little bit of the teal category. There we go. Oops. And I like this one because one, my husband doesn't experiment with really light ink, so this is nice to have it an option for a green ink for him that is still professional. Uh oh. too much ink on the nib. So this is Shin Ryoku. Very wet. But I like that tone and that saturation in there. Really pretty. So that's Pilot Orochizuku Shin Ryoku. Next we have Roar and Klingner Deep Pine. Oh my gosh, you can't even see that the, <laughs> the ink itself hasn't, or well, leaked a little bit in, onto the label. I haven't had a chance to use this in a pen yet, so it's nice to be able to swatch it so I can really see whether it's something that I should use. This feels more like a fall type of green. Yeah, it feels more like a fall type of green, darker, more forest type green rather than a bright and springy green. So this is warmer and clinger deep pine. I really like it though, and I think it would be a great winter, fall green. I just don't think I would use it very much in the spring or the summer. There we go. Roar and Klingner Deep Pine. Next we have another, I guess, classic, but I think this is a really good green. It's Roar and Klingner Alt Gold Grun. And I've had this for a while as well. Again, one of those that I what, I'm going to try and get all of my bottled inks into a pen this year just so that I can make sure I am using what I have purchased. In 2023, I spent a lot of time just inking up pens with sample inks because I had so many. Whereas this year, I really want to focus on balancing them out. Oh, I really, really like that green. So let's get some on my nib here. Making sure I get quite a bit of that excess off because I haven't been doing that. So this is Warmer and Klingner. Again, one of the first ink bottles that I ever purchased. Alt Gold Grun. And these are really well priced inks, actually, the Warmer and Klingner. I got this at my local stationery shop and I really, really like it. There we go. So you can already see just the way that that is drying. Really, really lovely. So that is Roar and Klingner Alt Goldgrun. 
Next we have Colorverse Alpha Pisces. And this one I bought just a little over two years ago. I really liked the samples that I got. So I wanted to buy the full bottles and I got them for a really good price at Pen Chalet. Again, not thinking that it would take me years to get through this bottle, especially if I have a lot of other samples coming in. But I really like this color. It shades beautifully and it's one of those lighter muted colors that you don't think is going to work out well in a pen, but actually it really does. I currently have it inked uh, in my which pen is that? My Pelican 140, which has the extra fine flex nib there, and it is lovely. So this is Colorverse. And the ink can be a little bit dry. Alpha Pisces. So it does need a wetter pen. But, I mean, just look at the color in this. Oops. Don't think I've got enough there. But yeah, it can be a little dry depending on the pen. So make sure you are choosing a wetter pen for this particular ink because just look at the tone in there. I'm gonna add just a little bit so you can really see the, the shading because I think it's fantastic. All right, so that's Colorverse Alpha Pisces. Next we have Private Reserve Spearmint and I received this a little while ago and I have yet to properly put it in a pen. And I don't know why I haven't put it yet in a pen, maybe because I don't have enough pens to put them in every month to put all of the, the inks that I've received in a pen, but I, I feel like this is one of those greens that feels more, I hate to say the word artificial, but manufactured even. It's not, I mean, they're all manufactured, but it's not necessarily a green that looks like you'd find it in nature, if that makes sense. There we go. Uh, it's one of those greens that really looks like it just comes from a uh, the color of a marker rather than something that you would find more muted out in nature. So this is private reserve spearmint. And actually these ink explorations are really good for me because they're allowing me to review all the inks that I currently have and making me consider whether or not I can sample and then let them go and see how I feel about them after they really inks that I want to ink up or if they're ones that you know what now that I've done an ink exploration like this determine whether they are inks that I want to keep so that is Private Reserve Spearmint. Next we have Ferris Wheel Press Edwards Gardens. And Edwards Gardens has had enough exposure in my, in my ink journal, as you can see from all of the ink down there. But it's such a pretty ink. I currently have it in my Pelican M800. And I think it's such a fun, fun ink. Just don't spill it. <laughs> because it's one of those really deep colors that will just get everywhere. Although I really don't mind the staining on my, on my notebook. It's just, it's now part of the, the memory. This particular ink I think belongs more in the teal family rather than the green, but I wanted to include it. I didn't include this may be the only teal that I'm including. I do have other teals and turquoises, but this is the only one I think that I've included in the greens category. Just to make it an even 20. So this is, oh, did I even get, I don't think I even got any on the nib. All right, so this is Ferris Wheel Press. Oops. Edwards Gardens. And you can already see the way that it's drying. You can see the red sheen and the gold shimmer. Really pretty ink. I've done a few, or I've done a doodle or a zentangle in this, and it's fantastic. I love it. 
But yeah, not really a green, more of a teal, turquoise, but I still wanted to include it because it's so pretty. So that is Ferris Wheel Press Edwards Gardens. Next we have Ferris Wheel Press Knitted Nettle, and this is a new one that was most recently sent to me by Weva, and I will be posting a whole video of everything that she sent me recently. And this one is also another similar kind of tealy ink, but I wanted to include it because I would put this in a green pen. And it, you're thinking like it looks kind of the same as Edwards Gardens, but when it starts to dry, you're gonna see what makes it different from Edwards Gardens and why I really, really like it. When it dries, it's got a beautiful kind of pink shimmer. Ferris wheel press, and this is one of their newer releases as well. Knitted nettle. You can already see a bit of that pink shimmer in there. Really, really pretty. Oh, beautiful. All right, that is Ferris Wheel Press Knitted Nettle. Next we have Ferris Wheel Press Spruce County Post, and there's not a lot left of it, <laughs> yeah, but I really, really like this ink. You can barely get the nib in there. Oh, sorry but it is a lovely fall inspired ink and it shades really well however it can be a little dry in some pens like you can feel it kind of feels a little dry even on the nib actually there i will leave that like that then get some here on my brass nib. This is the thing, like I love the charger sets. I hate the packaging. It's not for me. It's very difficult to fill a pen from there. Even putting your nib in there is difficult. But if you got a syringe, you can make anything work. So Spruce County Post. Really pretty green, but a little on the dry side. Oops. But it shades really, really beautifully. Where is the ink? It's like not going on the nib at all. There we go. Look at how dark that is. That's really lovely. So that is Spruce. Ferris Wheel Press, Spruce County Post. Last but not least, we have Ferris Wheel Press. What is this one? Hampton Harbor Sage. I was like, what is that? <laughs> and that's the thing as well with charger sets, they don't really label them. They just put the initials of the ink on the bottom. So I was like, spruce what? No, it's Hampton Harbor Sage. This is a very light ink, but it's great for headers. I've used it for headers in my passport planner and I really like the way that that highlighted the dates and, um, oh, sorry, that sound is not fun. But yeah, it is a lighter ink, not great for everyday writing per se, but really good for headings. I've used it for painting as well. Really lovely. So now, see if I can write with it. Get a little bit on my nib there. So Ferris wheel press. So yeah, on the brass nib, it writes fine. Hampton, sorry, Lucy's barking upstairs. I don't know what she's barking at. Harbor Sage. And it's got really lovely shimmer, but in terms of writing with an extra fine nib, not great at all but so lovely for headers so that is ferris wheel press hampton harbor sage 
So those are all of the green inks currently in my collection. And it's actually really interesting to look at these because Sugar Snap over here, as well as Knitted Nettle are new, and I'll be showing them in a video shortly here. But what are my favorites out of this? I mean, Antique Sepia looks pink rather than green. I really like Basil Pesto. Tom Sawyer is a little light for me. I need to use Katie's Custom Evergreen in a pen here. Wearing Ghoul, the two here, they're both light. And I'm wondering, is it worth it for me to be keeping them if I'm not going to write with them? I love Dye Mine Cappadocia. I love, like, it's got a little bit of red sheen, but it's not enough to overpower it. It's such a fun shimmer. And then Dye Mine Meadow is a good... I say basic, but good normal green. And I like having a base green like that. Diamine Marion Bright feels a little, uh, I don't want to say like artificial green, if that makes sense, like highlighter green. It's still very pretty, but it's not one I can see myself really using. Diamine Olive Swirl though. I love this one so, 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 so much. It's Fun. It's got a, like the, the base color is a little bit more neutral green, I think. If I say neutral green, I mean like olivey browny type green. But I really, really like the green shimmer. It really elevates the ink. Then you have Diamine Sugar Snap, which is a new one for me. I think I would really like using this in a pen. And then Dime, or Diamine Pilot, Iroshizuku Chiku Rin, a really good base green. I thought it was almost too similar to Diamine Meadow, but this, the Diamine Chiku Rin is actually just that touch lighter. And then you have Pilot Iroshizuku Shin Ryoku. Again, another one that leans almost towards the turquoise and teal, but still a really good green. And if you like, if you have fines and extra fines, a really good green without being too ostentatious if you want to use it in a professional setting. Then you have Roar and Klingner Deep Pine. I feel like this one is very similar to Sydney Darling Harbor, which I haven't actually included in here, but I feel like it would be more green than Edwards Gardens, which is now here looking more turquoise or teal. Then you have Roar and Klingner Alt Gold, Gold Grun. Really love that color. It's more, it, it, I mean, the Alt Gold Grun means old gold green. And I really, really like the, the way that it does look antique. Then you have Colorverse Alpha Pisces, one of the first greens that I had purchased a bottle of and it is a drier ink but it is really it's a muted color but still actually is very legible in a pen then you have private reserve spearmint another one of those inks that kind of falls into that category of i feel like it's more of a fake not fake artificial green and i'm wondering whether or not i want to keep that then ferris wheel press edwards gardens love this color but i think this falls more in the turquoise teal category then we have ferris wheel press knitted nettle a new one i feel like the base color is very similar to deep pine or even sydney darling harbor but then you've got that pink shimmer and a little bit of red sheen here really really lovely then Ferris Wheel Press Spruce County Post. Very, I feel like it looks very similar to Deep Pine, and I think it would look very similar to Darling Harbor. I'm mentioning that a few times, and it's not even in here. Um, drier ink, but still very, very pretty. And then lastly, Ferris Wheel Press Hampton Harbor Sage. You can tell it's a very, very light ink. Not one for everyday writing, but really good for maybe some painting or some headings. So there is an option for that. All right, so those are all of the green inks that I currently own. And wow, you know that my favorite color is green, but with inks, it normally it's purple, but I didn't realize I had so much green until I pulled them all out. So how many greens do you have in your collection and which are your favorites? And are they in this list? Are there any greens that you think that I should try? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and to subscribe. Thanks again and have yourselves a great day.